Welcome to Smart Casual Gaming, and following on from how we ended last episode... Not yet though, grab the Atari 2600 games first. We're taking a look at an Atari game today, so expect bad graphics, horrible sound effects masquerading under the guise that it's music, and a disappointing package overall. Let's get on with it. This is Star Fox for the Atari 2600, and already we have an issue. This game obviously has nothing to do with Nintendo's 1993 fan favourite, Star Wing. Actually, contrary to what you might have read on some parts of the internet, Nintendo's Star Fox was not renamed Star Wing in PAL regions due to this game. The Atari 2600 was not particularly popular in Europe, we were more into microcomputers, as evidenced by the fact that another game called Star Fox, this time for the Commodore 64, was the actual reason Nintendo's game lost its lupine moniker. This is unless you ask some people who claim that Star Fox became Star Wing not because of the Commodore game or the Atari game, but because of Starbox, a German keyboard company. Yes, I'm padding for time, look at it, what do you want me to say? I can't just go, ooh, this game is for a console called the Atari 2600 from way back in the 70s, and then read excerpts from Wikipedia articles whilst dropping in the odd bit of non-essential swearing. This isn't 2006 anymore. Things were different back then, and if you have anything to say about that, leave a video response below. So now that's all out of the way. Whatever it was. Here's the game's story. You are a generic space traveller in the future. There's no mention of when this is set, where you're from, what your name is, or even whether you're human or not. Whilst on patrol in an unspecified quadrant, presumably in deep space, you receive notice that a friendly robot freighter, as the instructions call it, has crashed on the planet of Beta 7, losing its cargo of Trimetalesium. Some enemy fighter drones are attempting to steal the powerful crystals, presumably for use in a brutal and horrific intergalactic war that would make a far more interesting game than Star Fox. I understand that this is an Atari 2600 game, a budget one at that, from an era where story wasn't prioritised, but this is too little for a game that claims to be part one in a series. They want to be the Fellowship of the Ring of the Atari 2600. It's competing against games that, although they also lack stories, they at least gave things names, adding a little depth and lore to their weird worlds, instead of giving everything a bland description like Friendly Robot Freighter. The closest thing we get that's beyond generic, all-encompassing sci-fi stuff is the dating system at the start of the instruction booklet, and even that's presumably an homage to Star Trek. Right, that's enough rambling about the story, that isn't what you came here for. Frankly, I don't know why you came here at all. You came here to hear me tell you about how the game is terrible. Well, I won't disappoint you, the game is awful in almost every conceivable way in terms of gameplay and visuals as well! In the style of games like Defender and its ilk, Star Fox is a horizontal scrolling space shooter. You fly along at a decent speed of only slightly too fast, and fire your line from the Mission Impossible title sequence laser at the enemy fighter drones as you battle over the trimetallysium crystals found in the orange atmosphere of Beta 7. This brown line contains the weirdest design choice of the game. When you're in the atmosphere, brown line, you cannot move sideways at all. Yes, in this horizontal space shooter, when attempting to pick up the trimetallysium crystals, you have to have pixel perfect accuracy to actually pick them up. This is near impossible, as if you stay still for too long, you are almost immediately shot by the enemies, losing one of your three lives. This makes the game's one objective irritating and difficult. Speaking of the enemies, the instruction booklet claims that the enemies in this game have, quote, a high level of computer intelligence. This isn't true. At all. From what I can see, the enemies basically just move around at random, other than when you're in the brown line where they instantly come towards you, immediately killing you with one shot as you try to leave with the Trimetallysium crystals. And that's the game! Yeah, there wasn't a lot to talk about, was there? You just say, flying your ugly white block of a ship around in what looks like the car park behind a disused council estate in Thatcher-era London, getting loads of points. So to end off, here's a list of five things you may have missed in Star Fox for the Atari 2600. Number one. That smiley face in the sky during the practice mode might be familiar to those of you who spent time on kids' programming website Scratch. Yup, he looks identical to Marshall, the lead character from the titular platformer that achieved a minor cult following in the Scratch community. Number 2 
As previously mentioned, the crystals in this game are called Trimetalesium. The fact that its name contains the word metal, despite the fact that they're crystals, proves that the name wasn't thought about very much. The tri in its name was probably inspired by trilithium crystals from Star Trek. Number 3. Star Fox's developers, Mythicon, also made two other games, Firefly and Sorcerer, both for the Atari 2600. I haven't played either of these, but Sorcerer looks almost identical to Star Fox, and Firefly looks like a crap Galaga clone. Number 4. Despite appearances, and all I've said about it, this still isn't the worst Atari 2600 game I know. Many of the sports games, especially Karate and Mini Golf, the Sword Quest games, and the confusing arcade-style platformer Pac-Con are all either just as bad or worse than Star Fox. Number 5. The last point I have isn't about this Star Fox at all, it's about the Commodore 64 game I mentioned earlier. This Star Fox was developed by Real Time Game Software, who also developed the Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum versions of a game called Star Glider, developed by another company called Argonaut Software. Argonaut Software, as well as developing games such as Croc Legend of the Gobos for the PS1, ported Star Glider to the NES. When they showed it to Nintendo, Nintendo convinced Argonaut to port it to the as yet unreleased SNES. Although it was never released for either the SNES or the NES, Argonaut were brought on by Nintendo to co-develop the Super FX chip, which was arguably used most prominently in Star Wing, also known as Star Fox. Yeah. Man, I got well and truly sidetracked and unearthed a purposeless conspiracy theory there. Shows you what happens when you decide to cover a game with barely anything to talk about. Oh well, back to topics more in my wheelhouse, methinks. Or at least something that requires less faffing with emulators.